Hello everybody and welcome to a loot of 100 hard mode Sanctum of Rebirth dungeon runs. This is going to be a little bit of a quicker and lower effort video than usual. That is because I am super focused on working on the RuneScape showdown. I will drop a link to the trailer in the description, but that is where my big focus is right now. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. The Sanctum of Rebirth is a dungeon that just released and honestly, before we get into the loot, I want to say that this is by far my favorite piece of content in the game right now. And it's not even close. This truly is the only PVMing content that justifies how strong our current gear setups and combat styles are. It's a bit of a challenge and just having best gear isn't gonna let you just defeat it. You actually need to learn the mechanics and engage with them, which is just amazing. Truly, I have almost nothing bad to say about this entire PVM encounter, uh, except for maybe the bomb attack on the first boss. It wouldn't be so bad if it was any other PVM encounter, but because every other mechanic is so clearly indicated with visual indicators, I feel like that bomb mechanic kind of stands out and doesn't feel that great. But outside of that, this truly is an amazing piece of content. So here we are. As you can see, we have the aura around us, which is something that you unlock once you do a hundred hard mode kills. And as you can see, we have done that. We've done one normal mode KC and a hundred hard mode KC. We just needed to do the one normal mode to unlock hard mode. And so ever since then, I've just been grinding away at hard mode. And honestly, it's been so much fun. But obviously you're all here to see the loot. And if you don't know, if you exit the loot interface on these chests, you can actually stack up all the loot in your chest like any other elite dungeon or anything of the sort. So that is what we have done here as well. So let's take a look at what we've got, right? There we go. 3.6 billion GP with a B. Very nice. Um, as you can see, we got four drops, only four drops. So one in 25 for us right here. Uh, we didn't get any of the other things. Obviously, if I had gotten them, I would, I would probably have used them, to be honest. Uh, especially like the prayer or the shard of genesis essence truly this is the thing you really want from hard mode these genesis essences are the one thing that are exclusive to hard mode and you need six of these uh, to upgrade all the weapons that it can upgrade essentially what this does is it makes tier 95s into tier 100s uh, and you can use them on the bow of the last guardian the fracture staff of armadil these new wand and orb set the tier 95 necromancy equipment and then the easy k and the uh the glacor weapons for melee so that's all of the six things that you can use it on and we will want to get all six of them to get those unlocks so obviously we don't have any of them yet uh, which is quite sad but we got three ones so i'm very curious to see how many of those we will end up getting before getting all the shards we also don't have the scripture yet and also no prayer codex. Speaking of the scripture, we only got 26 pages, uh, which is not amazing. I feel like if you have the scripture and you use it at this boss, you will not be able to upkeep it. So not a huge amount of these manuscripts are dropping. Uh, I feel like that probably needs a bit of a buff. I don't think the scripture is that good to justify it being that hard to upkeep because it's basically just another big book or grimoire situation, at least grimoire before they kind of updated it to be a bit better, uh, where it's very tricky to actually upkeep this type of item. Uh, other loot that's worth pointing out, we got one cursed Amiskut sand in 100 KC. These are clearly pretty rare. We ended up getting this from the second boss, I believe, in the dungeon. Uh, and that is the only interesting th thing we got from the first two bosses, because all the wand and orb drops obviously came from the final boss. Next up, another interesting thing is we got a key to the crossing. Uh, I got this on like the first kill and I was like, oh, this could be a pretty nice way to farm out some of these keys. Uh, if this is on the drop table, but it seems obviously like they are pretty rare and not really a viable method of obtaining them. Next up, we've got Elder Wood Spirits, uh, also Acadia Wood Spirits, but really Elder Wood Spirits are the nice ones. This essentially will allow us to get some more Elder Logs a bit easier and it's decent XP buff to woodcutting while you have these. So that's great. 
The moonstones obviously are nice. These are all the moonstones we will ever need, to be honest. I wonder what the value of these will be like for mains, because truly they've been super valuable recently, but that's just because they were so damn rare. And they really aren't that useful. Like, you only need four pieces of jewelry, if you even want all four. Like, not all of them are that useful, in my opinion. So I feel like these will drop insane in price. Like, Onyxes are kept high because of their ALG value, but the ALG value of these is basically only 2.4k. So these will surely be like 10k before uh, the end of the year. Next up, we've got a bunch of battle staves and some other alkables, which is nice, but nothing too crazy to write home about. The molten glass, though, is pretty nice. This is like the one thing on the drop table that is kind of nice to get because it's the type of thing that if you ever need it as an Iron Man, it's annoying to get. But essentially, this dungeon makes it so that you will have enough for a lifetime. Like 4.6k, I can't even imagine needing more than this ever. Uh, like this is useful if you want to make more uh, bomb vials for vulnerability bombs because the only other way to get them is to buy them from shops as a daily but this will allow you to make them which is pretty nice anyways let's take out one of the ones oh actually it took out all of them oops there we go. But anyway, the common loot, as you can see, was 284 million GP, or roughly 2.8 million GP per run without the uh, the rares. With the rares, it was uh, over 3 billion, obviously, but I'm not exactly sure how much these sell for at this point on Mainscape. I'm not going to sell them, obviously, but I think it would be roughly... Uh, 600 mil for each of these, so roughly 2.4 billion GP in weapons. But let's have a look at these weapons in action. All right, let's have a look here. Obviously, previously, the Prazel Wand and Orb were the best weapons in the game uh, as far as dual wield magic goes. But now they are being superseded by the Roar of Awakening and the Ode to Deceit. Truly, the Prazel set has always been one of my favorite weapon sets in the game. As soon as they were released, I kind of fell in love with these, and these have been, I think, my favorite weapons ever since, uh, as far as visuals go. So I think I might put these into some keepsakes and override the new tier 95s, because I truly just love the way they look, and they kind of match my outfit and stuff like that. But let's have a look at the new weapons we got right here. This is what they look like. Uh, not bad, obviously, pretty decent, but it's just hard to beat uh, your favorites, isn't it? They, they do look pretty nice, though, in their own right. I'm not sure if you can dye these. I guess we can have a look. I think I do have at least a dye somewhere. Yes, let's see uh, if that's a thing we can do. I'm not going to dye them, I think, but this item cannot be colored with that dye. Okay, so that's not a thing yet. I'm sure they will add that at some point. Um, let's go ahead and augment these. Sadly, it looks like uh, I don't actually have level 15 on my appraisal set, so I might have to upgrade those a little bit higher so I can actually get my perks back. But for now, I just want to quickly give these weapons a quick little test. I kind of want to see what they do. So damage over time abilities generate stacks and damage over time abilities deal 30% increased damage. That sounds amazing, I have to say. Okay, so basically, when you use this weapon, you continuously build up these Essence of Corruption stack. And when you have these, basically there is a 30% chance to, when you use a damage over time ability, uh, for them to all hit at the same time. And when it does, it also removes the cooldown. As you can see, the weapon spec has a 45 second cooldown, but if you land the proc, you can immediately use it again, and it is fantastic. At 25 stacks, you basically get more magic damage for every single hit, and at 50%, you basically get all kinds of adrenaline boosts, which are obviously fantastic to have as well. Truly, these weapons are going to transform magic once again. I'm very excited to give them more testing, and I might do some more dungeon runs of the Sanctum with the magic weapons, uh, that being said, once again, it was a shorter one and a less high quality video than you're used to, but trust me, I am working on the biggest RuneScape content project you have ever seen with the RuneScape Showdown.
Anyways, in the short term, I will definitely be doing more Sanctum of Rebirth, especially as I want to get one or at least a few of these Shards of Genesis. And I wouldn't mind a Scripture and a Prayer Codex as well, of course. I have been streaming almost all my KC on Twitch, so if you're interested in any of that, come join in and say hi. You can also ask me any questions on how to do the boss and all that stuff over there as well, of course. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video, and I want to thank my Twitch subscribers and my YouTube members as always. Huge shout out to all of you, and I will see you in the next video.